strong as a spell I'll never tell Hi guys, welcome back to Exmo Lex. Today we'll be continuing the series where we examine the LDS Church using the bite model of authoritarian control, looking at each point individually to help us determine whether or not the LDS Church is in fact a cult. Please keep in mind that this is just one video in a series. A church or an organization lining up with one point on the bite model doesn't necessarily mean it's a cult. So it's important to look at everything. And this video will be added to a playlist so you can go watch all of them and decide for yourself. This time we'll be looking at a point under information control, the I and bite model. Discourage access to non-cult sources of information. As somebody who spent 25 years as a Mormon, this really hit home for me. During my time in the church, there was a lot of talk of only looking at faith-promoting information. You'll even notice that in this series, I've tried to only use church material because I know exactly how members feel about outside sources of information. If I want all people, including current members of the church, to hear what I have to say, I have to be very careful to only use sources that the church currently deems as acceptable. I say currently because this is ever-changing, something that, you know, 30 or 40 years ago might have been considered faith-promoting and church-approved might now be considered taboo. So I'm going to share some quotes from church leaders to help us decide if the church really does discourage access to outside sources of information. But first, I also just wanted to highlight the opinions of others who, like me, are former members of the church. I made a poll on Twitter asking a simple question. Do you feel like the church withheld or discouraged access to outside sources of information? As of right now, when I'm making this video, the poll currently has 648 votes. 98% yes, 2% no. 98% of us felt like we should not look at outside sources. Now, why is that? Let me share some quotes from church leaders. Dallin H. Oaks in 2018, when we seek the truth about religion, we should use spiritual methods appropriate for that search. Prayer, the witness of the Holy Ghost, the study of the scriptures, and the words of modern prophets. I am always sad when I hear of one who reports a loss of religious faith because of secular teachings. Pretty self-explanatory. When you're, you know, looking for information about something spiritual like the church, you should not look at outside sources of information. You should only go to spiritual sources. Prayer, prophets, scriptures, etc. Although I do find it interesting that he included both study the scriptures and specifically the words of modern prophets. If you're studying the scriptures, surely you're also studying the words of very not modern prophets, right? But I digress. Dallin H. Oaks again, this time in 2019 during a devotional. President Oaks acknowledged that some Latter-day Saint couples face conflicts over important values and priorities. Matters of church history and doctrinal issues have led some spouses to inactivity. Some spouses wonder how best to go about researching and responding to such issues. I suggest that research is not the answer, he said, but the best answer to any question that threatens faith is to work to increase faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, he said. Conversion to the Lord precedes conversion to the church, and conversion to the Lord comes through prayer and study and service, furthered by loving patience on the part of spouse and other concerned family members. Very interesting. This time he's not even saying to use church sources, but he's simply saying avoid research altogether. Rather than researching doubts about church history or doctrinal issues, simply work to increase your faith. Yeah, and I'm sure that will fix everything. This next one is from M. Russell Ballard in 2015, and this clip was recorded during a YSA devotional that normally wouldn't have been recorded. Listen to what he said. We don't have to question anything in the church. Don't get off into that. Just stay in the Book of Mormon. Just stay in the Doctrine and Covenants. Just listen to the prophets. Just listen to the apostles. We won't lead you astray. We cannot lead you astray. I genuinely believe he was less subtle in this one simply because this wasn't actually supposed to be recorded. I think you'll notice that during general conference talks or official church magazine articles and things like that, the apostles tend to be a little bit more subtle rather than, you know, literally saying, you don't have to question, just do what we say. I also want to share one more passage, this time from Prophet Joseph Fielding Smith in his book, Doctrines of Salvation, Volume 1. Fault of present day education. The education of the present day is very largely knowledge without the accompanying intelligence or light and truth. It is bound to be so, and much of the knowledge will be mixed with error. Where faith in God and in his revelations is eliminated, and only the cold and many times barren conclusions of mind and reason are the guide. Such learning leads to spiritual death, not to spiritual life. I want to say to the Latter-day Saints that it is our duty to put our faith in the revealed word of God, to accept that which has come through inspiration, through revelation unto his servants, the prophets, both ancient and modern. And whenever 
whenever you find any doctrine, any idea, any expression from any source whatsoever that is in conflict with that which the Lord has revealed and which is found in the Holy Scriptures, you may be assured that it is false, and you should put it aside and stand firmly grounded in the truth, in prayer and in faith, relying upon the Spirit of the Lord for knowledge, for wisdom, concerning these principles of truth. He's pretty clear in this passage that anybody who's not a prophet or an apostle doesn't have God's truth. And even if there is, you know, scientific evidence, mounds of scientific evidence to support something, that doesn't matter. You shouldn't look into those outside sources of information. They don't have the full truth. Only the prophets do. I find that particularly interesting because Joseph Fielding Smith did not agree with evolution. He didn't think it was a real thing. And he actually specifically mentions that in this book. And he really went out of his way to make sure that everybody else should know that we don't have to listen to the experts in that field because they're not spiritual experts and us as spiritual experts have the full truth. This book is from 1954, but like I showed you using the more modern examples, the church throughout the decades has at least, at the very least, discouraged members from looking at outside sources of information, if not made it completely taboo. I myself feel like this was a common theme in my life growing up as a church member. So as I hope I very clearly demonstrated using church sources, the church absolutely does discourage access to outside sources of information. How do you feel about this as a former member, a current member, or an outsider? Do you feel like this points toward the church being a cult? Let me know in the comments. Huge thank you to my patrons for supporting the channel. I appreciate you guys so much. An extra special thank you to Craig Call, Doug Davis, Noble Monster Comics, Tans, and the Exmo Candle Co. for supporting at the Demon Tier on my Patreon. I also want to shout out today's patron of the day, Queen Priscilla. Queen Priscilla is a patron on the Heathen Tier and has been a patron for 26 months. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. If you would also like to support the channel, there are links to do so in the description below, as well as links to all my other social media if you want to see more content. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!